So as an artist, I've, I've been very lucky in being able to explore a lot more of myself, I suppose, is, is the first thing to, to talk about. So when you're, you're painting, you're you could quite often be painting all day or in, way into the night and you spend a lot of time by yourself. You spend a lot of time in your own thoughts, in your own energy, and you come to understand who you are. You sort of, you, you, you know when it's you, you know when you're just feeling yourself and you can you can paint freely and there's also different types of painting that I've found over the time you know some sometimes you can be painting and you can have an audio book on and you're doing detail and you you know you know you're just you, you're going through and there's a process to follow and you're using your head you're using the mind and the other times you you can just be painting from from the heart and this is this is again it's from yourself and it's you know that it's 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 not your head that's controlling the brush it's your heart that's controlling the brush and there's a really important distinction there and i think the more you paint as a as an individual and learn more about yourself the more you understand that kind of um separation of of, of head and heart and and which is which and you know the the beauty comes when you can start to combine the two and you know certainly in every painting you do there's there's, there's an element of both you know because you need to have structure and you need to have form and you know you need to have your, your your artistic skill and your training and everything that goes around that but you also need a something that can can't quite be be touched upon or, or or identified and i believe that's where where the heart comes in there's something that is just done with love or it's just done with kindness um, or whatever the emotion may be, it could be it could be hatred, it could be sorrow, it, it could be anything. But whatever the, your heart is spilling out at the time, and I can certainly look back through a lot of my work over the years that that goes into looking at the heart and and when I was happy and when I was sad and the different emotions that I went through, and it all gets reflected in the painting. So it's a great mirror for self, but also a great tool for. Um, saying something, making statements in art and, and highlighting things to people that they might not necessarily look at. For me, I've, I've painted in many different styles over the years. There, there's been the, the almost the, the, the photorealism kind of stuff and then the the more abstracty stuff um, and and then uh, you know playful the the drawing discipline so the architectural drawing the the faces the portraiture um, I've tried to be across the board because I think it's really important for an artist to be able to use all the tools of the trade and certainly a pencil is a fundamental tool that every artist should be able to use and be able to um, certainly draw something that they can see in front of them, but also capture the essence of something, you know, even if it's just a few lines. I mean, some of the old sketches of Rembrandt, uh, uh, for example, uh, do that perfectly. It's, it's a few scribbly lines, but it, it captures so much more than a photograph would because it's that feeling, it's that energy that he experienced in the moment that he did that line, you know, the pressure of the pencil, the little squiggles, the little flurries on the brush or the, on the, the, the using the lead and it's, it's incredible to see, but the, that one, br one brush flick or that one pencil stroke can invoke a lot more feelings and bring back that scene a lot better than a photograph, certainly for me. I'm going to look back over the evolution of my art and you know see I mean even the the, the pictures that are behind me here these the, the two pictures are very very different in style you've got something that's more abstract that's more from the heart shall we say and something that is more I'd say that was a passion it was a love was the, the mountain life and, and um, snowboarding skiing that sort of thing so that was painted from the concept of this is my passion Whereas this painting was actually painted from this is what my heart is feeling. Um, and this is, so this is inspired in the moment, that is inspired in concept. So I think there's, there's a few different ways we can look at art and certainly painting in that sort of sense that are we painting within the moment or is the, is the concept the in, inspired part of what we're doing and then the, the execution is, is, is more skill based.
you know, whereas that, I, I suppose that the skill is 20 years of painting, which is, I suppose, what I've been through, but it's, there's no distinct form there. There, there is just an idea that I've let the heart go and the, the idea that let the inspiration do the work in the moment. So painting in an altered state, well, once you've done it regularly, as soon as you pick up the brush, you're in that altered state. It's, it's like meditation in that sense that as soon as you sit down in the chair that you usually meditate in, um, you're in that altered state and that's, that's what you're going to do. And it's the same for painting. You know, as soon as I smell the oil paint or the, the linseed oil or the thinners or, you know, I sharpen the pencils, I, I know that I'm going to be doing some art. So my brain shifts into, into that altered state. And it's a really important state to be aware of that you can do, you, you can shift out of your conscious mind to a level that you can be open to inspiration. And in that space, we can then be susceptible or receptive to other energies and to other influences. And that's really important for some of the work that we get to do. Um, so when you know the, when we talk about connections with others, there's there's what's called a psychic link, which is a you know it's a, it's a person to person or mind to mind connection. But there there are many levels that we can connect with people. We can have an emotional connection to people. We can have a spiritual connection. We can have a, a heart connection, a soul connection, an energetic connection, um, a physical connection. It's it's all these different points of connectivity that we start to become aware of and we realise that you know, we, we're more likely to be attracted to people who we connect with on multiple levels. Um, and we can explore either different conversation or different emotions, different ways of being, um, or just different levels of being in other, each other's energy. It's, it's a really important uh, place for us to, to understand more about self and understand more about people and other people and you know what's out there what's what's out there in the world for us to to absorb and to use you know if we start to talk about the body and what the body's for and and why we've been given this body well it's to me it's a tool for experience we've been given this this wonderful opportunity of, of life on earth um, and whatever you believe that reality to be, but the, the, the certain fact is that we've all got a body. Um, we've all got the, the five senses that we're aware of almost immediately. You know, we can touch, we can see, we can taste, we can hear, we can feel. We, we know that, you know, it's, it's a very tactile world that we can go around and we can, we can meet people, we can pick things up, we can look at nature, we can, you know, smell the, smell the air and, and, you know, smell the sea breeze, we can admire a sunset or, be in awe over the vast mountain ranges, all of these experiences that are open to us. But there, there's, there's more than that. It's, it's almost on a deeper level than that, that we can, we can become aware of different ways of understanding and interpreting that information. So, you know, there's a sensory level, there's, there's, there's layers within that. You know, if we talk about um, the spiritual side of life, well, we can start to look around, you know, mediumistic connections. We can look at connecting to, to the universe. There's, there's millions of stories and religions and ways of looking at the world that are all slightly different, but they all seem to have a very similar theme of, well, there's more to this world. There's, there's more connections. There's more things in the energy. There's more atmosphere. There's more um, worlds out there, anything that you want to say that there's just more than I see before me, then that opens that conversation, which is such a wonderful thing. Um, and I think through art is a, is, a, is a great tool for using that. And again, the same anything within creative arts. So, you know, we look at music, we look at writing, we look at anything that, that's using creativity or using something that you can do in a slightly altered state um, that has room for interpretation then opens you up to being a receptor for all of these other influences and these other energy levels that are out there in the world. The 
meaning behind colour? Well, if we start to look at colour, you know, everybody, everybody will identify with a different colour. You know, one day you're feeling blue or I'm sad, but the other day blue can re represent freedom. You know, oh, I need red because I, I need a bit of energy or I need, need this or in another sense, red can represent danger. You know, so there, there's certain colours that mean certain things, but those meanings can change at certain points in time. Um, and we're very adaptive as humans. We, we know if we're driving in a car and we see red, it means stop. But if we're, if we're walking arm in arm and we, we see a heart, it means love. You know, these, we're, we're very clever at that. And I think we can use colour as a tool to connect with others, but to also understand a little bit more about self and a little bit more about other people as well. So if we talk about colour in, a, you know, connecting on a, on a psychic level with somebody or on a person-to-person on a -person level, um, then we can start to look at colours that have meaning for them. So, you know, for you I might say, well, I, I'm getting yellow, I, I see a lovely yellow for you, or I feel a yellow. Um, and that to me means knowledge, it means healing, it means wisdom, it, it's, it's, it's the search for truth that I think you're, you're on. It can also mean you're a sun worshipper. You know that you that you love being spending time on the beach and and doing that sort of thing. So, it's different colours can have different meanings, and the the way that we can look at them for individuals can give them an insight a little bit more into them because we've created that connection, we've created that energetic link between us where we are susceptible to their energy. So therefore, what we pick up can relate directly to them, and that. That is that, that's across the board for wherever we choose to connect or wherever we're able to connect. Um, and we do that through vibration. And colour, again, is if you take it down to, to its basic level, it's a vibration, it's a, it's a, it's a frequency. Um, and colour, each, each colour will have a different frequency. Um, and that's why at certain points in life you'll be attracted to certain colours. And why you can see certain trends going through the world. I mean, look at the, the, last, the last few years, there's been for me, very bland. Um, and what was the, the, the colour that was, that, was, that was used more than any other colour in interior design, in car colour and all of that was grey. And it's, it's a very, you know, nondescript kind of neutral, not really that inspirational colour. And I feel that's the time that, you know, if we look back at the evolution of things, apart from technology, which seems to have gone through the roof, but it's all very, everything's minimal, everything's simplified. We've lost the emotion with anything. We've gone down a very artificial route and I think grey is a reflection of that. Um, and as we look at the different colours that are coming into, into the psyche now and as we look at the you know, spring trends, the summer trends and all of that, we'll see different colours. And we can relate those to, or certainly I feel that we can relate those to, you know, the mood that is greater than just a community. It can be, it can be a mood on a global level. It's, it's a blend of the two that I feel you need to understand the, the level of creativity within yourself and start to explore that creativity through thinking about art, creating a concept, what you're passionate about, what, you, what inspires you. But then when you're actually painting and the, the discipline and the execution of painting, then I think that's where you can you can get stuck easily into the modality of this is my skill set and this is what it must look like. Um, and again, you can probably go too far the other way that this is all heart and there's no, there's no form, there's no structure to it. So I think it needs to be a, a blend of the two that when you start to look at art from an artist's point of view, you can start to see and recognise those moments and those points in the other artist's work. And certainly if we look at some of the great artists and some of the, the old masters and um, some of the inspired artists over the years, then you can certainly recognise those points within their painting where they've had the idea, they're, they're passionate about the concept and then in the moment of painting they've let that passion come through the heart and come through the, the hand and the brush and, and really, really just let go. And that's what makes a painting unique and also it, it can help to understand that point within art that you can't quite put your finger on why a painting is so brilliant or why, a, why there's a moment of genius that you just can't quite identify. And I think if you can view from these two points, then you can start to understand, well, that's where that genius comes from. 
um, and it comes from again going back to talking about painting in an altered state you know so once you have the concept and once you have that then you can flip your mind into an altered state of consciousness and let the inspiration come through because you've set that intent there's a lot of reservations um, about certain works you know this is it good enough what's the critique going to be where people going to judge you you know what what kind of work am I putting out and all these questions that you put them out into the world then people will of course they're, they're people have got opinions that's normal but I think it's 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 important for people to do that for their own confidence no matter how it's received and whether people truly understand the meaning behind a painting you know again if we go back to the two pictures behind me so that one people can quite easily understand they can say oh it's a true representation of a of a skier doing a trick off a um, off a road gap and he's um, this is what he's doing and the, the painting is, is painted quite nicely it's you know he's got some good skill with a brush or whatever it may be and if they, <laughs> if they, if they think that um, and the other one it might not be so easy to understand with that you know they might think well the, the, the colors are pretty but what is it you know or they might not even think that so there's it's, it's interpretation of, of, the, of the individual, the same with everything in life. Why do one pe person like the mountains and other people like the sunrises? You know, or the, the beaches, it's, it's, it's what people choose to like. Um, and I think there's, there's obviously global trends and influences and, you know, there's, it's, it's one person or ten pers people say one thing, then the eleventh person just agrees with them, you know, so it's that kind of, that kind of thing in life. But, um, I think it's important to to have things around you and certainly things in your life on your walls in your house I mean pictures for you know have always been important to to, to me personally but to us as a family um, with with my father being an artist as well you know we always had good pictures on the walls and we're always encouraged to go and see great art and it can really have a, an effect on your environment and who you are and how you wake up each day it can tell you something about about you every morning you know what what you see in that picture so if, if this was in the wall you know one day I'd, I'd pick out the ochre colors another day i'd pick out the whites and they'd shine brighter and i think oh i'm in that mood today or the blues if i'm feeling oh well i probably need a bit of outside space or you know i need a bit of freedom or i'm feeling a bit sad and then you do you know that you can use those as tools to to kind of put feelings and, and understand that your feelings, you know, in the same sense, really. So yeah, we're, we're running a, a series of workshops and courses and I'm, I'm very privileged in the people that I get to work with. And I think it's important that people can start to understand a little bit more about themselves and do you, you know, we can use art as a tool to do that we can also use art as a as, as something that can help them um identify things within others and you know look at their relationships with other people and and get the most out of it because i think art is a is, is something that we can all identify with and whether we're, we're creative or whether we can draw accurately or not we can all understand color so these are very basic skills and techniques that that we start off with and then we go further down some more advanced things but we start to look at what the colors mean to you and what the colors mean to to somebody else um, and how can we use that in order to gain information about people um, and how can we get a little bit of insight about ourselves so there's a bit of an evolution there and you know i think they're they're, they're very beneficial for people who want to start looking a little bit more about themselves, a little bit more about altered states of consciousness um, and going through a bit of an awakening process in a way where, where they, they start to become aware that there's, there's other things going on around them and they, they become aware of more than just the five senses in a way. So we can use art as a, as a gateway to a greater understanding of that side of life. So yeah, we've created um, a group called the Open Perspective, and these it's it's like-minded people who um, have the same interest in 
looking at different aspects of life and looking at different aspects of self. So for one example, I'm working with a lady called Hester and she's a, a concert pianist based in the Netherlands. Absolutely fantastic. She's, she's genius on the piano. And we started to look at the vibrational energy of music and how that related to the vibrational energy of art. Um, and then looked if we could connect uh, person to person between, between us and create, create art, but also connect with a third person and create something that was unique for them, that could have a specific intent within their lives. So they could put a piece of art on the wall that would invoke a certain state of being. And, and we could do the same with the music. So they would have a piece of music that they could listen to that would bring about this certain state. Um, and how that worked and that relationship could help to push people in further directions where they wanted to go within their lives. Mm -hmm.